Hey everybody, how you doing? Into Weapons back again with you. Got a new rifle to share with you today. Got it from J&G Sales a couple weeks ago and just arrived at my FFL a couple days ago. Thought it would uh, round out my Zestava collection pretty well, although I'm sure I'm not done as these uh, Serbian guns are starting to grow on me a little bit. But uh, what I ordered was a uh, Century Arms International M70AB2. This is the one with the bulge trunnion, so it's got the RPK type receiver. Uh, this thing is pretty sweet. I paid a total of uh, $641 out the door. That included background taxes. Um, uh, added on a $10 grenade sight here, which didn't come with it originally. Uh, the, the base price was $580. I believe they st still are available, although these are limited production with the RPK type receiver. So if you're interested in getting one of those, uh, make sure you jump out on it right away. But um, what it came with in the box here was a... Uh, unusual bore snake. I've never seen one like this before, but it's actually just a piece of rope with a couple um, pieces looks like metal on the end here to protect it. But uh, that I guess is a Russian bore snake, if that's what you call it. Uh, this is a surplus sling. It's definitely got a lot of corrosion on it. Uh, it's got some rust around the hinges and stuff, so yeah, it's in pretty rough shape. I don't think this will be uh, used uh, on this weapon at all, but uh, it's nice that it comes along with one. Comes with uh, at least from JG Sales one Yugo Bolt Hold Open magazine, and this is a 30 round steel magazine. It's got the uh, follower that comes all the way to the top of the the lips here, which when the bolt comes, it stops right there on the back on the last round. So that's kind of nice. It, it seems like it functions pretty well. It's covered in a little bit of cosmoline and oils and stuff, but it's in really good condition. So that's nice. Uh, it comes with a an oil can here, and this thing is uh, just covered in looks like grease or cosmoline, and it's pretty disgusting. Just a little plastic oil can, more or less. Uh, standard AK cleaning kit, which is again covered in a lot of dried cosmoline. I probably won't end up using that. It doesn't have a stock on here to put that in here anyway, so I'll probably just bag that and put it in an accessories bin. Uh, came with the uh, import sticker, which is pretty standard for these. And uh, like I said, I added on the $10 grenade attachment. Um, the grenade launching attachment. I don't know why I did. I just figured it would be kind of cool to have with this particular gun since uh, that's uh, this gun's particularly made for it. So, uh, and then it came with the rifle itself. And again, uh, it's the M70 AB2. And but what I'll do is I'll pull the box out here and get that out of the way, so we can take a closer look at the gun itself. And uh, so the gun itself here, as you can see, it's a paratrooper model. It's got the underfolding stock on it. And uh, it works pretty well, actually. It's a push button over here on the, on the left-hand side. You push that in. Uh, you can kind of fold it up around like so. And then this uh, buttstock area just kind of folds up and comes into a nice position there. So it nice and compact. Again, it's the paratrooper model. They made it so you're able to jump out of a plane a little bit easier with these guys. And then to uh, get the stock back out, you push that button over here on the, the rear of the gun and fold it out. You'll hear a click. And then you can fold the uh, buttstock down into its original position there. Um, obviously, it's not going to be the most comfortable to shoot. It's uh, you know a wire folder, so uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get a good cheek rest on there and uh, get a good sight picture all the time. But it is what it is for an underfolder, that's for sure. Uh, some of the other things that I thought I would mention about this, just go over some of the specs or I guess other variants first. There is the M70 AB2T which uh, has the stamped AK, AKM type receiver, which is you know just a one millimeter thick receiver. Uh, those are a little bit more readily available. J&G Sales also carries those. They're a bit cheaper at $520. Uh, but keep in mind, again, this RPK thick type receiver, the M70 AB2, um, is going to be a limited production. So uh, you're not going to be able to find these for very much longer. And uh, I've already had a hard time kind of finding retailers that actually carry this. J&G was one of the very few that did. Uh, they also have the M70B1, which uh, it has the fixed stock, not the underfolder stock. It's pretty much the same exact gun as this, except for the fixed stock. So it does have the uh, bulged RPK 1.5 millimeter receiver, uh, and that ran about $530, so still a very reasonable price, again, at J&G sales. Uh, the specs on this, it does have a 16.5 inch uh, new US made non chrome line barrel uh, with a 1 and 9.5 inch twist. Uh, it has an uh, overall length of 34.25 inches with the stock extended, 24 inches overall length with the stock folded. It's a uh, pretty light 7.5 pounds, so it's not a very heavy gun, and obviously, again, that's probably just because of the stock. Uh, it's pretty minimal on there. Uh, the trigger is a Tapco G2 single hook uh, with a trigger pull of a... This one's got a light 3.75 3 to 4 pound trigger pull, but uh, just a standard trigger pull. So again. A little bit of 
polishing will get that to be a little nice and crisp, but uh, it's right at three and a half pounds or 3.74 pounds, so uh, I don't think there was going to really be much of an adjustment need there. Uh, it has the uh, new U.S. made Nodak Spud, I believe, RPK type receiver with the bulged front trunnion, and that's kind of the key identifier right there. Is you got this big bulge right here. That's what you want to look for if you're going to get one of these uh, limited, limited production models. Um, and again, that comes with a 1.5 millimeter thick receiver, so it's a bit, bit heftier. Um, it's got a U.S. made polymer furniture uh, for the, the hand guards up here. Uh, it's got a bayonet lug, which is really nice. You're able to throw a bayonet on there right out of the box. A lot of these uh, M70s don't have that, like the OPAP and the NPAP. And I just have an example here for you guys. This is my uh, Yugo Type 3 bayonet. And it fits on here real well. Locks up nice. It wiggles around a little bit, but does lock up pretty nicely on there. Looks pretty good. Overall, pretty happy. It uh, comes with a bayonet lug right out of the box. That's pretty cool. A lot of guns don't do that because of import restrictions. Uh, what else do we got? We have the deactivated flip-up night sights. Uh, it does have a dead tritium vial in the back and uh, no tritium vial in the front sight, so I will have to replace those. That's one of my planned upgrades in this gun, but... Uh, many of you know the NPAP, or I should say the OPAP I know for sure. I don't think the NPAP has the slots cut for it, but on the OPAP rifle, you actually have the slots cut in the back sight and the, re and the front sight to uh, add on those night sights if you want. And uh, I actually ordered a pair for my OPAP, and we'll be doing a video on that sometime here in the near future. But this one actually has it on there already, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see that very well, but as you can see, it's flipped up now. I flipped it down. And again, you can flip it back up, and essentially there's a tritium vial that runs between there inside that bar that uh, would essentially glow if it was still active. This is uh, off a parts kit, which is uh, much older than 10 to 15 years, which is the lifespan of those tritium vials. And then the front sight here, I'll show you, it's uh, built into the front sight lock, and you just kind of flip that up. And again, a tritium vial would be right in the middle there to, to light that up for you. So those are two things I'll have to get in order to... Uh, put this gun into its kind of its original configuration with those night sights. Uh, what else do we have? We have the grenade sight, which I hadn't mentioned yet, and that's pretty uh, one of the key features of these M70 AB2s is you have this grenade sight that flips up from the uh, front gas block, just like that. And uh, what that allows you to do is, I guess, you know, aim for a grenade launching type capability. Uh, what it also does is shuts the gas off, so it essentially turns this into a single shot rifle. And uh, that is for, you know, the grenade attachment uh, option. It has to be that way. So uh, I guess you can buy a uh, 762 by 39 blank adapter that you can use, uh, as well as the grenade attachment that I showed you to screw that on. Uh, and people have made these into golf ball uh, launchers, which uh, is pretty cool. I don't think I'll end up going that route, but something that some people end up doing. Uh, it does have a removable slant brake. I believe it's Tapco, although it could be an in-house one from Century. Yeah, it doesn't say Tapco on there, so just a standard uh, slant brake on there, nothing fancy. It is removable uh, with the left-hand uh, 14 by one uh, uh, threads on there. Uh, it's got the cleaning rod already with it, which, you know, a lot of these surplus guns don't come with that, like the Wassers and things like that, so nice to have. I don't think I'll ever use it, but again, good thing to have on there if you want it. Uh, the serial numbers for this gun are all over the place. Uh, it is a parts gun, so when it comes into the country, just essentially they use enough parts uh, off the original parts kit that they have to, and then uh, the U.S. parts to make it compliant. Uh, but the uh, numbers are all over the place. Nothing matches at all on this gun. Uh, what numbers I have found on here is the lower receiver is the Sentry Arms number down here, the serial number. Uh, we also have a serial number over on this side, uh, which is very vague and hard to read that doesn't obviously match. Uh, we have one on the front trunnion, rear sight leaf, uh, the grip, dust cover, the bolt, the bolt carrier, the gas tube, and there's a few other electro pencil numbers on here that I wasn't able to make out on some of those parts as well. So again, just a mismatch of parts, again, from a parts kit, so that's not abnormal. Uh, as long as they function and work, that's fine. That's what an AK is built for. So um, There is a lot of corrosion on this, again, because it's from a parts kit. It was probably a gun that was used for a while in the actual uh, military or army or whatever it was, but uh, there's quite a bit of corrosion up here on the front sight block, and I don't know if you're going to be able to make out the pitting there. Um, and really what that is, is it's pitting from corrosion previously. They uh, bead blast it, and then they uh, Cerakote over the top of it. So it is protected. It won't rust, but it does give it kind of a cool, authentic look, a used look, a battlefield pickup type look, which uh, a lot of people, a lot of enthusiasts really like. 
And there are some corrosion in other spots, such as the grenade sight, the lower handguard bracket, the rear sight block, uh, the stock, and the bolt. So, uh, again, a few spots on this gun where you'll find corrosion because it's a parts kit. Now, uh, what else did I have on here? I thought this was pretty neat on the rear sight block. It does have stampings, and hopefully we can get that to come out for you guys. But it uh, says, yeah, let's see if I can get a light on here for you. Use one of my bore, bore lights here. Let's see if we can get that in there for you guys. I don't know if you're going to be able to make that out, but essentially it uh, says Zastava Kregujevac, which I'm not sure what that means, and Yugoslavia underneath it. So pretty authentic, nice to have those stampings. It's got a Zastava Z on there as well, I believe, um, as a manufacturing mark. Um, and then the, some of the upgrades that I'm going to do to this rifle, guys, if you want to stay tuned to see what I'm going to do. But again, the night sights is something I plan on doing. Uh, I'm going to replace these polymer furniture with some authentic Yugo furniture, some wood ones that'll look real nice on this gun. Um, I'm going to fix the corrosion on the bolt. It does have some rusting and pitting, so I'll just kind of clean that up a bit. Uh, we'll put a Tapco retaining plate in here for the fire control group instead of that uh, wire shepherd's hook. Just make it a little bit more uh, um, safer, I guess, and more dependable. And uh, we already upgraded the, uh, the bayonet. We're going to throw on this matching Yugo Type 3 bayonet, and uh, that'll look real nice with the gun as well, even with the wood furniture. But uh, overall, real excited for this gun, uh, guys. Like I said, it rounds out my collection with the Zastava factory pretty well. You can actually go to Zastava.com, the, the, um, the military version, and look at you know, the different models that they have available on their website for militaries around the world. And uh, you'll find the M70 AB2, the, um, the uh, select fire version of it. And it's very similar to this. Once you replace the uh, wood handguards on here, replace the night sights, there's really not much different between this and the military version besides it being select fire. So uh, this is a pretty cool gun. It's very close to its original military configuration, which is uh, you know difficult to get on a, on a civilian platform. So... Uh, very cool rifle. Let me know what you guys think. We'll have some uh, range footage come up here in the near future, but uh, we'll do some comparison videos if you guys are interested in that. Just let me know if you're interested in seeing something particular. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching, guys, and until next time, take it easy.